Hi guys, welcome to this session in Microsoft Project. In this module, I want to show you how we can use the Team Planner. So first of all, I'm going to create a small project so we can utilize that. So Project A, I'll just do a few tasks. Phase one, phase two, phase three and phase four, like so. And I'll give myself a few durations, two, three, two, three, like that. And then I'm going to indent those so that project A becomes the summary task for that. So three days. I won't do the links just yet. Now I'm going to create a couple of resources or three or four resources. So I'll go Bill, Ben, Bob, and Anne. Let's say they're all on £10 an hour. 10 and they all get 20 pound overtime, 20, 10 and 20. Highlight those two, fill them down, and then get the Gantt chart back up. Have a quick look at that, happy with that. I'm not doing the links just yet. I think if you do the, the, the links, the predecessors first, it sort of screws the uh, team planner up a little bit. So down the bottom is the quickest way to get onto the team planner. The third one in this little group team planner brings it up so what it does it shows you your team and the time scale and then the tasks that there are so if I drag phase one for Bill to do say and then phase two for Ben and phase three for Bob and then phase four for Anne so everything's okay fairly straightforward what happens if you drop a second task on top of a resource you see bills now gone red is over allocated so you could go back into the gantt chart and sort this out but you can also double click on these and change the duration here so if i go for that one say that's a one day task and then click ok and double click on this other one and say that's a two day task so I've managed to fit that in and obviously then I need to push that to there, which should give me um, scope to do both tasks and it will snap into position like so. So now um, Ben isn't doing anything so you can see who's available. I can push phase three to Ben and phase four like so. Now if I go back to the Gantt chart, which is the first icon there, and then just highlight these and do the links. Let's see what would happen here. If I click on the link icon, just for speed, it moves them all across. How's that affected the team planner? It's just pushed them across like so. Now watch what happens. So this is why I said don't do the links first. If I push that task to be done there, because it's a different person, it's telling me that if I do that, I need to remove the link. Okay, so I've not not allowed me to do that so I need to get back to the Gantt chart and then m delete the link and then it should let me move phase three in the team planner phase three it's already moved I can do it so that's the problem with doing the links first before you do this so you do this and then do the links and if there's a clash you have to sort it out so basically it's horses for courses really whichever you prefer I prefer to do the links but I can understand where companies have got this sort of issue where they want to look at the resources and allocate the resources you saw what happened there when I push that that way because there's a link it's pushing it forward so if I push this next forward it's pushing that forward because of the link even though you can't see the link in this view but that's all I want to talk about in this little video how you can use the team planner to organize your project plan. So thank you for your time, I'll catch you in the next one.